nine strategies to reduce your SaaS churn. In this video, I'm gonna run through nine strategies to reduce churn on your SaaS product and how you can implement them today in your business. I'm Matt Grace, Managing Director of Flying Donkey. Let's get into it. To remain profitable, a SaaS company must always retain its clients. SaaS companies have a hockey stick type curve because they work in such a way where they acquire clients and keep them into the future. This increases LTV or lifetime value of the client, but it's really important that you reduce the churn and that is clients leaving your platform. Servicing a client on a SaaS platform can be near zero. And this is where these hockey stick type graphs can really help you in accelerating your SaaS product into the future. In this video, I'm gonna talk about nine strategies you can employ today to try and help you reduce the churn on your SaaS product. All right, number one, why would you wanna reduce churn on your SaaS product? This may sound quite obvious, but again, I just wanna make it clear for everyone here. Reducing churn on your product means that more clients are staying on your platform for longer, thus paying you more money to access your services. While you might be out in the market collecting new customers, if a similar or same amount of customers are churning off the other side, you're actually net losing customers overall. It's key to keep in mind that the cost to acquire a customer can be somewhat significant and putting some effort into maintaining the clients that you currently have may actually end up being cheaper than trying to acquire new customers overall. Thus, it's very important that you can reduce the churn on your SaaS product and keep the cohorts and current clients you have on your existing platform. As I lay out the following strategies, some or all of these may be applicable to your SaaS product, but I recommend you at least try to implement two to three of these strategies in your SaaS product, particularly one at a time, to see how the impact is on your SaaS product and particularly on your clients and how that flows through to your bottom line. Keep in mind, a client retained is more important than a client gained. If you never lose a client in your business, you're always going to grow. All right, first thing, Watch out for red flags. When trying to reduce the churn in your SaaS product, it's key to look at why users are churning away in the first place. There are numerous ways you can do this, but one of the key things that we need is data. Now looking at the data you have in your system, you might be able to see what and how your users are using your system. When they logged in, how long they were logged in for, what they did when they logged in, and when they exited the site. This will give you at least a key indication of why users are churning away, or why in fact they're not staying with the platform. Two key metrics you can really be looking at here is session length and number of logins per day. If you've got a SaaS platform where someone is using the product extensively throughout the day, you really want those session times to be as long as possible. Therefore, your SaaS product must be a key part of their workflow within their day-to-day -day operations, and therefore it's better that they're gonna stay around for longer and not churn away. At the same time, continue logging in day after day is obviously a key indicator that the service you're providing is obviously really good. Once you've noticed how long a normal session time is or how often a user should log in, highlighting users that are below this average and then reaching out to these users and trying to discuss with them is a really key point to take away here. Clients are not used to being reached out to and communicated to by SaaS products. So if you can reach out and communicate with them and ask them why they're using the product less or why they're logging in not as many times per day, you can at least try and open a conversation and a dialogue on why things are working the way they are. You may be able to catch a client before they churn away, or you may be able to find a feature that they actually need in your product that they're using elsewhere. It's key to remember at the end of the day, your clients are the ones using the product and it's really them that know your product well and what they want in it. Talking to them is a key part to this and it will allow you to reduce their churn away from your product. All right, strategy number two, customer loyalty programs. Now we're all aware of customer loyalty programs in brick and mortar stores, things like Flyblies or Woolworths Rewards. Now for SaaS products, it's the same concept. We wanna reward our current clients for staying with us in the long term. Remember, acquiring a client can be quite expensive, so you wanna spend a fraction of this budget on customer loyalty to try and maintain these clients into the future. The things here that we've seen that work quite well is maybe some members only areas or long time customer discounts that you can provide to your customers to thank them for their long service with you. Implementing one of these systems can be as easy or as hard as you wanna make it, from simply being a manual spreadsheet that you keep on your side, there's some manual reporting that you run, up to a fully integrated customer loyalty program that's integrated directly into your SaaS product. By reaching out and congratulating customers on reaching certain milestones with you and giving them certain perks and features in your product will relay to them that you feel they're a valuable customer to you and open that dialogue that you really want. It's really a two-way street here. You need to make sure that you're loyal to your customer and your customer at the end of the day will be loyal to you. So to summarize really, a customer loyalty program is really about rewarding your clients for staying with you and if you reward your clients, they'll hopefully stay with you for long in the future and thus reducing the churn on those customers. Number three, creating a more tightly planned marketing plan. Essentially what we wanna to get to here is target and market to a cohort of customers that are the right fit for your product. Now, if you get on a certain cohort of clients, 
through a channel that you've experimented with, it's key to track that client cohort through the entire year. Maybe you ran a particular campaign in January and you ran a different one in July. With the campaign in January, the churn rate on those might be 5%, but the one in July might be 20%. And this may be just the type of people you've marketed to. Maybe they're not quite the right sort of fit for your product. Let's remember to focus down on those ideal clients and make sure the ones that you are targeting are the clients you want on your platform. It's also key to track cohorts. A number of marketing products do this, and they show when the user signed up and what cohort they're a part of. This is generally broken down by month to month, and it shows you if your January 2021 cohort is still with you and what the churn rate is there. Once you have these cohorts, you can start working out what marketing schemes are working and which ones are not. Again, it's key to keep in mind that it's as much making the product right for the client as making the client right for your product. If you're marketing to the wrong set of clients, no matter how good your product is, it may never fit perfectly, and that's why they're churning away. They're churning away because the product doesn't fit what they want to do. So you can either change the product or change the client. And in this one, what we're saying is make sure you target the right clients. Remember, any marketing dollar spent is off your bottom line. So you've got to make sure that's going to the right places to get you the right cohorts of clients that then reduce your churn. Tracking cohorts is really a key takeaway from this point. That's something you should do with any standard marketing product. Number four, offering flexible contracts. Again, this may sound quite obvious, but SaaS products sometimes fall into the standard month-to-month -month billing cycle and don't really think outside the box on what they want to offer to their clients. Some clients look at something a little bit more than just what they have, and therefore offering them some flexible contracts may be able to get them across the line. Some of the common things we see here are annual discounts, potentially 10 to 20%, or offering features on different tiers. So therefore, if you go and develop a brand new feature that's really cutting edge, and you're thinking you might have to up your pricing across the board, maybe instead of doing that, reach out to your key clients and say to them, if you want this feature, we can charge you some more. If you don't want this feature, we can keep you on the plan that you're on. Thus offering the flexibility. Simply raising the price across the board may urge some clients to churn away because they may be more price sensitive than others. Again, offering this flexibility is really reaching out to your clients and asking them what they want in the product and what's gonna work for them. Of course, all clients always wanna pay less money, but it's really about giving them flexible options that make sense for your bottom line and keeping those clients around for as long as possible. Being able to reduce the churn, again, means less customers rolling off the back end, which then gives you that hockey stick-like growth that you want in your SaaS product. Flexible contracts is just one way you can try and retain clients for longer than you otherwise would if you stuck to rigid SaaS month-to-month -month contracts. All right, on to our next point, improving the onboarding process. The onboarding process is really gonna be the first thing that your clients see when they get onto the product. If they have a great onboarding process and they understand exactly how to use the product and the value it can bring to them, that's gonna be a really key driver in making them stick around and use your product into the future. Improving your onboarding process can be one of the best ROIs you can do in this thing. And it's one that I highly recommend. You, you know your product inside out, but your client doesn't know it from a bar of soap. So it's key to know that when a client onboards, they either have an excellent onboarding program that automatically takes them through and shows them all the features they want, or better still, that support automatically reaches out to them and offers them demos and walkthroughs to use the product. If a client is key and knows exactly what to do and their onboarding is smooth, it gives them a really good time and a really good feeling to know that this product may suit them. Remember, you've just spent all this money to acquire this client and you really want them to stick around. Onboarding is one of the areas we see great slippage and where a lot of people churn off. So if you can really get your onboarding sleek and right and couple that with support you're really gonna capture a lot more people up front and get them invested in your product. One of the key things here with SaaS products is getting the setup right at the start. If you can spend that time and help that client get set up, they'll become more sticky. That's because they don't wanna migrate or move away to a different SaaS product. If they are sticky and stick to your platform, then this is gonna mean they're gonna be less likely to churn away. Simply onboarding and setting up on another SaaS product is gonna to be too difficult for them. The final thing I'll say here is A-B testing is really key on the onboarding process to see that what makes sense to you is also making sense to your users. Small tweaks here and there that are cleverly tracked, particularly against churn rates, is something that's really important to make sure your onboarding process is explaining everything you need for your client. I wanna reiterate that while you know your product really well, your client doesn't know it from a bar of soap. So while saying something to them one way might make sense to you, it may not make sense to them. So make sure you're tracking and explaining everything you think in multiple ways so that your clients know exactly how to use your product, are set up and ready to go, and thus hopefully reducing the churn on your product. A client that doesn't churn away is another a client acquired. And you wanna grow over time by adding clients one after another. And if they're churning off the other side, you're never gonna get that hockey stick growth. Publishing a roadmap. 
This is actually a really easy one to do and one that actually we've seen pay great dividends for clients in our past. Publishing a roadmap shows your clients that your product is moving forward into the future. And it's one of the big positives around software as a service. A client might sign up today, not for a feature that you currently got, but a feature they can see that can work inside your platform. If they can see this inside a roadmap, then they may stay on the product longer because they know that feature is coming. As I mentioned in the previous point, migrating to different SaaS products can be quite a hurdle. And therefore, if you can show your clients through the use of a roadmap that features are coming in the future, and the client knows that it's a bit of a hurdle to migrate SaaS products, then they're gonna stay and stick on your platform and thus not churn away. Providing a roadmap is really about communication with your clients, and that is, this is the vision we have for our product, and this is what it's gonna do now and into the future. It's always difficult to build every feature in your product. The list is ever growing. Part of the roadmap is gonna give clients the ability to give you feedback. I've also seen roadmaps where ranking is included and I find this to be a really good feature. While internally, you or your product managers may have an idea about what feature that all the clients want, the best feedback you can get is actually from the clients themselves. By providing a roadmap, you can actually ask users to rank roadmap features, and therefore the top feature can therefore be incorporated into your roadmap. This feature with more votes can then be done earlier, and potentially mean that less clients are churning off earlier than later. At the same time, if you open up a roadmap, you can also suggest and ask people to add items to this roadmap. This is really where the Agile methodology comes into its own, and where you can really get this feedback loop from clients. Once clients can see that their feedback is going to the system, they start feeling a part of the system, and therefore they're less likely to churn away. If they can get what they want in the current product, then why would they go somewhere else? Just touching on a point I mentioned before, you are always gonna have an extensive list of features that you're gonna to need to develop. There are obviously multiple ways you can achieve this, and hiring more developers is always a way to do this. But don't get into the trap of trying to build a feature for everyone, and make sure that you are always looking at the vision you had in place for the software you started with. It's an easy trick to make to build every feature that's requested in your roadmap, but make sure you're sticking to that strategic direction and you're viewing it over time. But providing a roadmap to your clients and getting that feedback is gonna be a key crucial indicator to help you know if your product is heading in the right direction and also reducing churn on those products. All right, creating a public forum. This is actually similar to creating a roadmap, but it's more open and conversational than a roadmap feature. A forum is a really good place for other customers to share ideas, share feedback, ask questions, and really get involved in a community around your product. Again, if a user feels they're more engaged and they're more part of a community around your SaaS product, they're less likely to up and leave. By providing a community, you can also get some help by other users helping users themselves solve issues and therefore lessen the burden on your support. If users feel like they really know the product and they are feeding back into a roadmap as well, you can really start building this community around your product and this will ultimately reduce the churn on your product. We've seen this in many products, they get a cult-like community around their product and this cult-like community almost acts as an additional marketing channel to bring new users into the product. At some point, some of these users even help with onboarding, and you can see how this potentially becomes a bit of a feedback loop, where people bring people, and they help them get on speed, and they help them solve their problems on your product. You're the platform just facilitating it, but they're actually helping you grow your product. I will say, it can be a double-edged sword. You've gotta make sure you're on your game, and you heavily moderate these public forums. Sometimes they can spiral a little bit out of control, and if your product is a little bit behind, or you're not as responsive as you can be, the negative comments can build up. Make sure you don't attack these people directly, but you look at them and try and support them. If they are being negative or angry towards your product, it's probably from a good place, and they really want to actually improve the product to use it. Just think about it. Why are these people commenting on your forum about your product if they really don't care? Otherwise, I'm sure they've got much better things to do on a weekend than comment on your forum. So take the feedback on board, try and incorporate it, and say how you're gonna use it and move it in the future. Really, a SaaS company engaged with its community is really gonna have much lower churn rates than one that doesn't talk at all. While you can get away with this in a faceless SaaS company, we have found that more engaged communities produce more profit and less churn. All right, staying competitive. So it's most important that your SaaS product stays cutting edge and competitive with the market. One of the big positives to SaaS products is that they are deployed on the cloud and they can constantly change. But coupled with the roadmap feature that we mentioned, it's key that your SaaS product constantly evolves over time. Now, both communicating with your audience and with your product managers having their ear to the ground, it's key to have a long feature set list of items that you can develop over time and keep your SaaS product current. If your SaaS product falls behind either on features or compliance, users may not be getting the functionality that they need, and this is when they're gonna start looking elsewhere for other products. Staying current can be very difficult, and it can be a huge amount of work, both on the feature side and the compliance side. Let's take, for example, if you're an accounting product, and let's say you are helping accountants submit tax returns to the ACO. Each year, the tax return is going to change, and each year, the rules are gonna change. 
It's very important that every year you do an update so that your tax return submissions are up to date. If an accountant uses your product for a previous year and you don't do those compliance updates for the current year, that accountant obviously is gonna to have to look for other products. This has nothing to do personally with you, but it's because your product is not staying competitive. In this market, there's so many software products out there that unless you're on the cutting edge and you're delivering features and compliance updates as and when as needed, customers are gonna to need to move to another product to achieve the outcomes they desire. Make sure you're also keeping track of your competition around what features and services they're developing and try and see if they have a public forum and see what feedback they're getting on their public forums. Maybe you can see some ideas that look good for them, that are working, or maybe you can see some ideas that aren't working for them. You need to keep your ear to the ground and a good product manager should do this for you. The key thing to remember here is you must stay competitive and deliver features and compliance work for your customers before they need them. If you're ahead of the curve, your customer will always feel satisfied and they're not gonna to look to churn away to another provider. Again, that's what you want on a SaaS product is an ever-growing list of customers with new ones coming through the door through a targeted marketing campaign and very few going out the other side and churning off. All right, our final tip here, number nine, take care of your most valuable clients. Now, while it might be good to treat all clients the same, if you do have some very large clients that use this system significantly, and we do find this quite often actually, it's key to make sure that there's some direct relationships with this client and you potentially offer some perks or extra features to this client. It's not uncommon to see some clients be 20 to 30 to 40% of the revenue for a single SaaS product. And that's because they obviously do something really well and that company is just doing it on a large scale. Obviously losing a client of this size will potentially really hurt the bottom line. So while it is still a single person churning off, if they are a larger revenue number, it's key to reach out to them and keep them in the loop. Maybe they have a direct person who becomes a relationship manager, or maybe they have a direct line to developers so they can get extra features that they really need. Or maybe they have a specific loyalty program that gives them something extra and beyond what other clients get. Rewarding those really large clients who really feed through to your bottom line and give you that stability as a product are really important to keep around. If you lost 30 or 40% of your revenue overnight because you simply weren't keeping in touch, I'm sure you'd kick yourself. So it's key that you take care of these large clients and potentially offer the one of the many things that we've said here, but just at a better scale. This is really gonna give you the best bang for your buck and make sure that you retain these large clients well into the future. All right, well, that's nine strategies that we've seen work and we've implemented here at Flying Donkey at some of our SaaS companies. Marketing and acquiring clients is really hard. So therefore, you wanna try and reduce the churn on your SaaS products as much as possible. By implementing one, two, or many of these products, you hope that you can reduce the churn on your SaaS products. If you want any help implementing any of these strategies, or you have any questions on reducing churn on your SaaS product, feel free to reach out to us here at Flying Donkey, as we're happy to show you some of the case studies and ways we've implemented these strategies and help you on your journey to making a better SaaS product.